OBA, Open Bible Association, is on the air. Episode 2, My Testimony Remix. Sit back and enjoy. OBA, Open Bible Association, is a Studio 772 production. Broadcasting from our home in Grassroots, USA. KJV Mark 1:15 and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. CJB Mark 1:15. The time has come, God's kingdom is near. Turn to God from your sins and believe the good news. Shalom and howdy folks, OBA Open Bible Association program is on the air, opening the Bible shining light on a dark world at a time that is needed, letting you know that no matter how bad things seem to be there is hope, with God all things are possible, thank you for taking a few minutes of your time with us today, let's open our Bible and either study or just relax from the mundane troubles of his world and focus on the world to come, our blessed hope. Bible time. It's time to get out this Bible, open up the books, and start reading some scripture, and let the kingdom of God come into your soul. It's Bible time. Get all excited, folks. It's Bible time. Let's have some reading of the Word. KJV Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 7 The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wackeneth morning by morning, he wackeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. See J.B. Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 7 Adonai Elohim has given me the ability to speak as a man well taught, so that I, with my words, know how to sustain the weary. Each morning he awakens my ear to hear like those who are taught. Adonai Elohim has opened my ear, and I neither rebelled nor turned away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. For Adonai Elohim will help. This is why no insult can wound me. This is why I have set my face like flint, knowing I will not be put to shame. Shalom and Pound Folks OBA Open Bible Association program is on the air. Opening the Bible shining light on a dark world at a time that is needed. Letting you know that no matter how bad things seem to be there is hope with God all things are possible. Thank you for taking a few minutes of your time with us today. Let's open our Bible and either study or just relax from the mundane troubles of his world and focus on the world to come. Our blessed hope. Shalom and howdy. This is OBA, Open Bible Association, Episode 2, My Testimony, Remix. I know that's a kind of a wild title. I will explain that. I originally made an Episode 2, My Testimony episode, and I used music in it that wasn't particularly royalty-free. I thought it was royalty-free, but there had to be something I could do with it, and so I got a copyright strike on it, so I decided to totally redo this video. My testimony is not going to change. I still had the same salvation experience that I had in the original video. It may sound a little bit different, but it's actually the same. I'm not using an animated voice. I'm using my voice. 
and I want you to kind of know me a little bit better. If you're listening to me on a podcast or however that you're listening to me, if you're watching me on a YouTube, I animate my YouTube picture. But on the podcast, I want to use my voice for my speaking parts. And so this is, gives me the opportunity to make my testimony more my own. Although I wrote down exactly what I wanted to say and I had it read for me, it was really planned out. So this is more on the fly and on the cuff. I want you to know my character. I believe this is probably a better way. So my testimony would start out when I was 21 years old, which is 44 years ago, on a fall day, early fall day, a Wednesday in Columbus, Ohio at the Freebus Avenue Church of God. I was in the balcony of a Wednesday night service, and they pre I remember the preacher preaching. I can't really tell you what he was preaching about except for it seemed like he was a preaching to a couple of people in the first couple of rows. I don't even think that he saw or knew or anything about me, and I really didn't want to make it in that way. I was sitting there with my aunt and uncle, Mike and Brenda, who had taken me to church. When the preacher said, let's all stand and pray, I stood and prayed. I prayed the only prayer that I know, which was the Lord's Prayer. You know, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I could finish out quoting that, but I didn't end it with an amen. I ended it with help me. That is the moment, and that is the minute, and that is the hour, and that is the day that I got saved. Now, people would say, well, you didn't go to the altar when they had the altar call. I can't really help that, but that is the minute and the hour that I got saved. I did go to the altar many times. After that, people had laid their hands on me, and they prayed for me, and I sought the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I had some really wonderful times at the altar, but that was not the time that I got saved. I got saved standing saying that prayer. Maybe that's theologically wrong. It's real. And, you know, I look at that, maybe there's some wisdom in that. The fact is, there's nothing magic about it, nothing complicated or anything. It's just the simplicity that I believed in God, and He gave me salvation. It's just that simple. And that's one thing that I never want to do, is take the simplicity of the gospel out of it. God is not as complicated as we seem to make him sometimes. We seem to make the way way harder than it should. That's not my goal. My goal is I've spent these 44 years learning about him. I've not been a goody-goody person, and I've not been a really bad person as far as that goes, I've never been extremely tough and God saved me like I was some kind of really ruffian or whatever. And I've never been an angel uh, where I've walked like up in the clouds or whatever. I was just basically a regular person with regular person sins and regular person's desires. And even when I got saved, I've always struggled and life has not been easy. I've never had it easy as far as the way things go went. I had to learn how to make a living, which was rough, but I, I did that. And in this 44 years, I did one thing that I thought was really cool. After I got saved, I met, well, actually, she was my Aunt Brenda's, the one that took me to church. Her mother, Sister Nyleen Terry, and she gave me some great advice. For some reason, she kind of took me under her shoulder, if you will, under her wing or whatever. And she gave me some mentoring advice that I really took serious. And that was, she said that the Lord told her to read the Bible, read it all the way through, and don't miss a word. And I thought, man, that is great advice. Maybe I could do that. And I did. I read the Bible all the way through. And I had only study book that I had was a American Heritage Dictionary. And when I ran across a word I didn't know, I would look it up until I know it, and I would read the verse again with the understanding of the word that I didn't know, and I'd do it till I ran across another word that I didn't know, which for me wasn't uh, a really long way in the Bible. 
So I read it through that first time, and then I read it through again, and I started marking things. I give myself a color code. I came up with a color code of marking it during that journey. Green was for salvation. Orange was for uh, different thing. I forgot exactly what I used the orange for. Blue was from was for the Holy Spirit. So I started giving myself this color code of you know what it was. I went through it like two or three different times. You know, it kind of kind of changed the code at some some point. So it's not ironclad. That's why I would say, oh, wait a minute here. But green was for the Godhead. I started marking things like that in one time. And orange was for salvation. So, you know, I kind of changed my color code from time to time. But it wasn't important of how I was marking. It was the fact that I was learning. That was the important part. And then I added something to my study abilities, which was a strong concordance. Started looking up words and finding where words appear and what the definitions were in the Hebrew and the Greek lexicons. I started looking at that kind of stuff. And then I got about four more translations. The churches that I went to were basically King James only churches. I got these four other translations and I started reading them book by book. I would take the book of, say, Titus, and I would read it in all four of these translations, and I would try to figure out what the difference was. I would look at all the footnotes and why that they were translated the way that they were. That's how I got my Bible knowledge. That, and I also, at one point, moved to Tennessee here to be closer to my kids. My marriage didn't work out too well. I got married when I was 23. I moved in 2000 to Tennessee to be close to my kids. I had a, I, I really did get to be a, a dad, and I was kind of happy about all of that. And my kids, um, I got to see my grandkids. They're getting to the place to where they're going to have kids. So I really feel that I've been blessed in that area. When I moved down here, I ended up a long way from people that I know and from everything. And so I ended up moving to Nashville at one point. In that time in Nashville, I got to meet people that, you know, on the internet that were pretty well like-minded and gave me some directions on studying and good study materials and good books to read and things like that. So kind of went through that period of learning again. Even whenever I wasn't in Nashville and I moved back, I still had about two and a half hours of driving. So I would listen to radio teachings and things like that. And I'd spend five hours a day still learning without even really thinking about it too much. My knowledge and my wisdom grew to where I am today. And I'm still learning as far as that goes. But there's one thing that I don't think that I can outlearn. And that's the simplicity of the gospel. I don't want to outdo that. I mean, I've learned sacred names. I've learned about the Sabbath. I've learned so many different things. But there's something called the simplicity of the gospel, which I don't want to ever, ever make things too hard to where the simplicity of the gospel just doesn't shine in anything that I give as a testimony or a teaching. Simplicity. God says it, and we can believe it. We may have to seek for some understanding, but the understanding is not going to be so complicated to where you can't find it. And this is my testimony, and I hope that this is enough of me that you would find it interesting to look or listen to the rest of my podcast or YouTube videos that I'm making. And thank you for listening. Thank you for either viewing or listening to our program. If you like this program, do not forget to give us a like. If you want to hear more of these programs, subscribe. Shalom and thank you. We hope you had fun and enjoyed today's show. We are planning to have some great Bible study content and maybe a guest or two. Let us know what topics you would like us to study together. OVA, Open Bible Association, bringing understanding to the Bible, making things new, shining the light on a dark and troubled world, not letting people forget with God or things are possible. OBA Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA.